Despite all the off-court antics, one thing that you just can't take away from this specific individual is the fact that he's arguably the best finisher of all time and is easily the best ball handler the NBA has ever seen. This is no doubt a player who's went through a lot before his rise to NBA stardom as it wasn't always that easy but he always stayed true to himself and had somebody relatively close to him that instilled a certain type of drive and relentlessness inside of him. This is the Kyrie Irving story. Kyrie Andrew Irving was born on March 3, 1992 in Melbourne, Australia, to mother Elizabeth and father Dredgick Irvin. Now Elizabeth was an exceptional volleyball and basketball player as she played for the Boston University's Terriers volleyball team. Now she would go on to pass away when Kyrie was just the age of four years old due to an inflammatory condition by the name of sepsis syndrome. Now Dredgick was also a standout athlete on the basketball court as he also attended Boston University and finished there as the all-time leading scorer with 1,900 931 points. Now he did go on to join the Boston Celtics training camp roster, but he wasn't able to secure a spot. Instead, he went on to average 30 points per game in the Australian Basketball League. Now, Kyrie was only just two years old when his family left Australia to West Orange, New Jersey. As a toddler, he would spend countless reps sharpening up his ball control and by six years old, he was easily sinking left-hand layups. And it wasn't long after before Irving became 100% committed to the sport of basketball after attending his father's adult league games. When he was in the fourth grade, he made a promise to himself that he was going to the NBA. He wrote it on a piece of sheetrock and put it in his closet so he could see it every single day. His dad became his best friend as they would spend hours every day working on finishing drills around the basket to his handles and by high school in New Jersey while attending Montclair Kimberly Academy in his freshman and sophomore seasons he averaged 27 points 10 assists and 5 rebounds per game to add on to that he was putting up 4 steals he was easily now one of the best prospects around the area and became only the second 1000 point scorer in school history in his sophomore year he led his team to their first New Jersey Prep B state title and after that amazing season he transferred to St. Patrick High School because he just felt that he needed a bigger challenge now he did have to sit out the first 30 days of the season because of the transfer he made. Irving also teamed up with Michael Kidd Gilchrist who was regarded as one of the best players in the class of 2011. In Kyrie's first season with the school, he put up 17 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals per contest. But he was a big help in his team winning his third New Jersey Tournament of Champions title in 4 years. In August of 2009, Kyrie led the USA East to the tournament title in the Nike Global Challenge after putting up 21 points and 4 assists per game and he was awarded MVP but in the following year St. Patrick was banned from the state tournament for holding practice before the start of the winter sports season. Still, Kyrie and his team won the Union County Tournament Championship. He was putting up 24 points, 5 rebounds and 7 assists. He finished his senior year as a top tier talent but was regarded as the number one point guard in all of high school basketball. He was also selected in the 2010 McDonald's All-American game. As a five-star recruit, he obtained offers from schools like Georgia Tech, Duke, Kentucky, Seton Hall, and Texas A&M, but he made the ultimate decision to sign the letter of intent to play basketball at Duke University. Standing at six foot two and 180 pounds, he was averaging 17 points on 53% shooting. It's like he really didn't have a weakness, and everyone quickly started to realize how great he truly was until he did suffer a severe ligament injury in his right toe during his ninth game of the season. So after he returned from his injury, he helped Duke reach the NCAA tournament and led his team to the Sweet 16 until losing to Arizona. But even with Irving only suiting up for 11 games, he came extremely close to being named the NCAA Freshman of the Year. And at this point in time, he was projected a top lottery pick, which led him to enter the 2011 NBA Draft. And he would be selected first overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
And as a 19 year old rookie, he was averaging 19 points. That season, he was named to the 2012 Rising Stars Challenge where he scored 34 points and earned MVP honors. Now he showed out every single game. Despite playing on one of the worst teams in the NBA, he finished his rookie campaign winning rookie of the year and was the only unanimous selection to the NBA All-Rookie First Team. Going into his sophomore season was where he really started to become a household name. You could just sense that he was going to become one of the faces of the NBA. In his second year, he posted a career high putting up 41 points against the New York Knicks and became the youngest player in NBA history to score 40 points in Madison Square Garden. This was also the season where he became a first time All-Star, but still the Cavs finished at the bottom of the pack with a record of 24 and 58, missing the playoffs by a big shot. But by the end of his third season, he was already a two-time All-Star and took home All-Star MVP and was doing this at only the age of 22 years old. But with him only being able to get his team to a record of 78 wins and 152 losses in three years, the narrative would start to grow on Kyrie not really being your franchise piece that could lead your team to any postseason success. What made it even worse is that Kyrie missed 49 games throughout those three years. But things would all change because once LeBron returned to Cleveland in 2014, he took most of the pressure off of Irving and they won the lottery and traded the pick of Andrew Wiggins to Minnesota in exchange for Kevin Love. And just like that, Kyrie went from being part of one of the worst teams to being part of arguably the best team in that regular season. Irving still got his and averaged 19 points per contest. Kyrie went on to score 30 points in game one of the playoffs versus the Boston Celtics in a 113-100 win. He helped the Cavs reach the NBA Finals. But he would have to leave game one versus the Golden State Warriors in overtime. Irving would be ruled out for the rest of the series with a fractured left kneecap, which did require surgery, leaving LeBron having to do it all by himself. But in the very next season, the Cavaliers got their revenge against the Warriors. The Cavaliers made one of the most iconic comebacks in NBA history in the 2016 NBA Finals. To get him on Irving. Irving and Curry, one-on-one, -on -one. Irving puts it up. Kyrie matched LeBron's 45-point performance and hit one of the most legendary shots of NBA history to experience his first NBA championship. That summer, the Warriors acquired Kevin Durant. Kyrie put together his finest season, putting up 25 points and 6 assists while suiting up for 72 games, but they winded up running into an overpowered Warriors squad and lost to him in 5 games in the 2017 NBA Finals. With Kyrie feeling like he could be the primary franchise leader on a championship team, he requested a trade and in August of 2017, he was traded to the Boston Celtics in exchange for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Ante Zizek, and the right to the Brooklyn Nets 2018 first round draft pick which turned out to be Colin Sexton. Even though it was everything that he had asked for, things just didn't go the way he wanted them to because star Gordon Hayward, who the Celtics acquired in free agency, went on to break his leg in the first game of the season. And on top of that, Kyrie missed his share of time due to injuries. And the young Celtics core looked pretty solid without him. In his second year in Boston, with championship aspirations around the team, he only led them as far as the second round of the playoffs and got shut down by the Milwaukee Bucks. And there was already some tension in the locker room. And on July 7, 2019, Irving signed with the Brooklyn Nets in free agency to join Kevin Durant, who was hurt. In his debut, he put up 50 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. But in a close 127 to 126 loss in overtime, Irving only appeared in 20 games that season, and his shoulder and knee injuries just kept holding him back. He averaged 27 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds that season, while shooting 48% from the field and 39% from three. In his second year with the Brooklyn Nets, they would acquire James Harden. And with Kevin Durant's return, they were now the greatest trio in NBA history. Now Kyrie and James Harden both battled with injuries, which caused a lot of lineup transitions in the 2021 playoffs. 
they would lose to the Milwaukee Bucks in game seven. Going into the next season, once again, Harden and Durant were dealing with injuries and upon that, Kyrie refused to get the vaccine, which caused even more controversy around the organization. It got to a point to where James Harden got agitated and just couldn't do it with Kyrie only being able to play away games, which oftentimes left Harden with so much pressure. Harden then requested a trade being sent to Philadelphia. The crazy trio that everyone was hyping up was now split up and only played 16 games together and just like once before, Kyrie was to blame. In the 2022 playoffs, the Nets did get swept in the first round. Fast forward to the current season. Kyrie has been averaging 27 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists while shooting 48% from the field and 37% from 3. When Kevin and Kyrie played this season, they have maintained a record of 20 and 4. But even with the great success, Kyrie Irving requested a trade. And on February 5th, 2023, Irving was traded to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for Dorian Finney Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, and an unprotected 2029 first round draft pick and two future second round picks. Now, as his squad surprisingly missed the playoffs, coming into the 2023 24 season, now that the two of them have the opportunity to play a full year together, Offensively, they're going to be one of the most exciting duos in all of basketball. Kyrie Irving's rare combination of on-court talent and hard work has allowed him to get recognized as a fan favorite. And when it comes to his scoring bag, he's in a league of his own, which has undoubtedly qualified him to go down as one of the most legendary scorers of all time. What I learned most about myself is just to stay patient through kind of the everyday hustling and bustling. You know, just trying to pick up my, my kids, my wife, and transition to a whole new city uh, and just get acclimated with the team and be mature about it. You know, give myself some grace because it's, uh, it's a new experience. So I definitely learned a lot about my patience and uh, how to communicate uh, better with uh, you know, not just people I'm working with, but just overall in my life. It's uh, not an easy task to handle this NBA life alone. I have a great support system, so I'm grateful I had them along that journey, and, uh, and now we're here, so it's good. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kyrie Irving story.